and it's very frustrating and it's super hard to be in this chamber and to be cool with people and cordial with people who are making policies that are detrimental to our communities. We tell you this day in and out that you are making policies that are detrimental to our communities, that are hurting our communities. Wow, that was Florida State Representative Angela Nixon passionately speaking out against Florida's new measure that severely impacts voting rights in the state. The bill passed last night along party lines and is just one of the actions being taken in states across the country, states like Texas and Georgia, to make it harder for millions of people to cast their ballots in elections. Florida's bill takes aim at vote by mail, restricting the use of drop boxes, and it limits who can turn in a ballot to elections officials. The bill also bans outside groups from taking any action to influence those at line in a polling place, which voting rights advocates say could prevent voters from being offered food or water as they wait in voting lines. Florida's Republican governor, Ron DeSantis, who made voting security one of his big agenda items this year in an attempt to continue to peddle the former guy's big lie, said last night on Fox News that he's going to sign the bill into law. Joining us now is Democratic State Representative Angela Nixon, who you just saw there in Florida, the Reverend Al Sharpton, host of MSNBC's Politics Nation and president of the National Action Network, joins us as well. Um, first, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't look any better today, does it? Can you just talk about what happens when this law is signed uh, by the governor? So uh, thank you for having me. Um, <laughs> what happens when this law is signed by the governor is basically um, Florida is going to return to the wrong side of history. Um, we have a Republican legislature that passed a law uh, which seeks to disenfranchise voters, particularly black and brown voters. And this is something that is very disheartening, especially coming from the organizer world as an organizer and now being a legislator. It's very disheartening that we have to deal with this. Representative, was there any fraud in Florida in 2020? The only fraud that took place was actually when a former Republican legislature put in a sham candidate down south. So, no, the the the. The idea that there was rampant fraud in the state of Florida is just something that's untrue um, and it's something that uh, the Republicans often use to motivate their base. And Donald Trump won Florida and Ron DeSantis is a Republican. Republicans have no problem winning in the state. I wonder if you can talk about whether you sought to have businesses get involved the way they've involved themselves in Georgia after the fact, after the law was signed, and in Texas, some of them are involved before their law um, is signed right. into law. So, yeah, so definitely. So I am, I'm, I, so in my day job, I'm a community organizer, and I also work with um, organizations that seek to uplift and empower underserved communities. And we are in conversations with uh, businesses and corporations to ensure that um, the voices of the people will actually be heard. So yes, that is one avenue that we are looking at. Um, but again, we want to just continually encourage the voters out there um, to continue to turn up and turn out to vote um, and to push back on these unjust laws that are seeking to disenfranchise, again, black and brown voters. Look, there's no coincidence that black and brown voters turned out in record numbers uh, on last year in 2020, um, especially in regards to vote by mail. And so we know that this specific legislation was targeted to black and brown voters and to really silence us. And this is something that we have to continually try to push back. You know, Rev, I think what is so disturbing is that fact coupled with the fact that there was no fraud in Florida. This is legislation that solves nothing because there was nothing to solve. So this bill doesn't even have any sort of dual purpose in the two halves of our political divide. It is just straight up voter suppression. It is absolutely straight up voter suppression. When you look at the fact that the measures that are in this bill 
clearly disproportionately impacts black and brown people in Florida. Nash Action Network has an office in Miami-Dade, so I've worked in Florida and know about elections from a nonpartisan way. And when you look at the fact that, as you stated, Nicole, the president at the time, Trump, and DeSantis won. So it's not even like you have an aggrieved party here. Uh, so this is part of the national move by the right to disenfranchise black and browns. And it is no more acute than right there in Florida, where they can't even take winning as, as a way not to involve themselves in disenfranchisement because there was record turnout of black and browns and there was a record turnout in the gubernatorial election that DeSantis did win, but he didn't win by the margins that they were used to. And I think that what uh, the representative Nixon so passionately uh, expressed in the legislature is what I'm hearing from a lot of activists around Florida that we work with and, uh, and faith leaders like Bishop Victor Curry and others. This is a, a culmination of a long period of time that they've tried to disenfranchise black uh, and brown voters going back decades, but now it's more acute than we've ever seen it. And it needs to be resisted. Businesses and everyone else needs to join the movement with Floridians to resist this kind of movement. Rev, the I'm not going to play it, but, you know, we've all had this conversation. Mitch McConnell said there was no voter fraud. Uh, Mitt Romney came out the night of the insurrection and said these are lies. And Donald Trump needs to tell the truth to his voters. Liz Cheney has said people have been lied to the extent to which the president uh, has sort of repeated these lies about a stolen election. It is both a security threat. It's now being used to pass laws in big, important states like Georgia and Florida. What is not working? Is it the Republican sort of stranglehold on these legislatures? Is it the ambivalence of corporations? Because first there was one, now there are two. I think what is has worked is that the uh, Republicans have a stronghold on the state legislators. And many <clears throat> of us that have been involved in voting rights movements nationally or in states need to really focus on uh, on turning around a lot of the state legislatures, just as we are concentrated on the U.S. Senate and the U.S. Congress. I think that that is what has worked for the right way. I also think the private sector, as we saw in Georgia, needs to really be hit hard that they cannot continue to do business in states, have consumers who are being disenfranchised. You have the right to sell your product, but you don't have the right for me to consume products from people that are financing a lot of these right-wing initiatives to disenfranchise voters. So you can say, I have the right to sell my product. You do. And I have the right to reject your product if the net from me purchasing mm -hmm. from you is going to finance my disenfranchise. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.